Awesome. Oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> all right. Welcome all again to the Fung Fellowship Info Session for the 2023-2024 academic year. It's hard to believe, but we're here and so excited to get to answer some of your questions about the fellowship as well as get to introduce some of our amazing current fellows and staff who are here today to chat with you and most importantly, answer some of your questions. So with that, as I said, um, there we're gonna be dropping links as well as additional information into the chat. So feel free to direct your questions there as well as take a look at some of those links um, that we will have um, dropping in there shortly. All right, so a little bit of what we're gonna cover. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen in a moment and do a few introductions. Um, and then we'll go into program information and projects. Um, but first I'll stop by sharing my screen, stop sharing my screen and introduce myself first. Um, hello all, my name is Adrienne Greer. I'm the assistant director for the Fung Fellowship Program. I've been with our team since 2016, since we began as a pilot. Um, my personal background is in public health. I came to Berkeley pretty soon after finishing a master's after working in healthcare. I had worked within the VA healthcare system, really looking at how to bring whole person care, in particular um, integrative medicine, things like acupuncture, chiropractic, Tai Chi into the medical system, in particular for pain management. I had also worked within UC Davis Health um, and really had a real curiosity about coming back into the higher education space and really ways of how we could start with undergrads of really providing these experiences for innovation um, before even leave, um, leave the institution. So it's been a real privilege to be here. I mostly work with students and with our staff to really drive the program. And I'm excited to get to know each of you a bit more. So with that, I'll first um, share um, share the screen and ask Priyanka to unmute and give yourself, give a quick introduction. Um, and then I'll, I'll call it Dan will be next. Thanks, Priyanka. Awesome, thank you, Adrian. Hi, good evening, everyone. So glad that you're all here today. Uh, my name is Priyanka, you, she, and her pronouns, and I am the Program and Student Experience Advisor um, here for the Funk Fellowship. Uh, my professional and educational background mostly in encompasses um, social and behavioral sciences, um, social justice, as well as advocacy. Um, and before Cal, I was working for a nonprofit based in San Francisco um, and was involved in advancing inclusive and sustainable social impact solutions, as well as providing social services um, and digital literacy program. Um, and here at the Fung Fellowship, my role is primarily involved in fostering student engagement through collaboration and professional development opportunities. Um, and I'm here as an additional support uh, for the fellows, and I'm always happy to provide resources and information to ensure a positive experience for all. Um, and again, it's, it's great to be here today. And with that, I am going to popcorn it over to Dan. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, sorry, I'm multitasking here, but my name is Dan Zevin. I use he, him pronouns. I am someone who's been around and involved in so many things. Uh, we could go on and on, but um, first and foremost, I'm kind of a nature guy, both here on earth and, and up in the sky. Um, so uh, my degree was in wildlife management from Humboldt State University with a minor in fisheries. Um, but I was really interested mostly in exotic places, exotic animals, and I got an internship to begin with uh, after I graduated at the Los Angeles Zoo, very near where I grew up, and um, started with the California Condor Recovery Program, um, something that was very much in the news. They took this, this poor animal species, there were only uh, 24 individuals left, and they brought them all into captivity and, and started uh, captive breeding program to, to save that species. Um, so I got involved in that first as an unpaid intern, and then eventually they paid me like seven bucks an hour, not much. Um, and I was loving that. I started working with other captive breeding programs, but eventually I needed to make more money and, and uh, 
actually get a, a real job, if you will. Um, so I ended up with the Nature Conservancy in Hawaii. I had never been to Hawaii before, um, but I got paid to go bird watching. I got paid to go look for monk steels. It was it was amazing. But um, I think being from Los Angeles, I had a lot of city blood in me. You can only go around those islands so many times, and um, I got to the point where I caught. They, it's a real thing. They call it island fever, and um, so I eventually just kind of quit that job. I don't know why exactly, but um, I think I think I needed, I don't know, more excitement. I was still in my 20s. Uh, and I came to San Francisco. I've been here ever since. Um, I did do some more environmental consulting work. And then I ended up in uh, education for a great uh, organization called Nature Bridge. Um, they do outdoor field work with all grades uh, in uh, Marin Headlands here. Um, and then I, I also always had this side interest in, in space and astronomy, and I um, almost got a minor in that. But anyway, I ended up with a, another organization that does astronomy education and then a quick stint at the Exploratorium. And then I ended up here at Berkeley at the Space Sciences Lab uh, 14 years now. It'll be 14 years next month. Uh, but I was looking for a way to get back to my conservation roots, and I had been pitching this new idea around and somebody said go talk go talk to the folks at the fung fellowship that sounds like what they're doing and it was in 2019 right adrian where i met you guys and i said hey I have a little, i don't you guys do public health let's expand into environmental health and the conservation track's been going now for uh, almost three years yeah two and a half years i'm really excited about that Yes, and Dan is currently the lecturer for our conservation track, um, and he'll be talking more about that today as well. Um, thanks so much, Dan. Um, and I'll pass it over. So we have a few also current fellows here today to be able to answer some of your questions, as well as um, they'll be um, part of the Q&A at the end. So I just want to provide a little time up front for you all to introduce yourselves. I'll also um, um, ask each of you to share, again, your name, your major, your hometown, and something that you're involved in outside of, outside of your studies. Um, so Tavleen, if you wouldn't mind kicking us off, that would be wonderful. Hi, um, thank you. Uh, my name is Tavleen. I'm a junior um, studying molecular and cell biology and data science. And now I'm in my second semester of the Fong Fellowship. I'm in the health and innovation cohort. And it's been a great experience for me. Um, uh, one thing I like to do outside studying is mostly, it's also very bio and healthish related. I love working out and trying out new recipes um, to get my 200 grams of protein in every day. And uh, overall, the fellowship, uh, it's been a very warm family to me, uh, being a biology and data science double major. I was always looking for ways that I can explore the intersection of the two and really try to see how do I use data science skills in biology and do something in the realm of healthcare, um, which is also a career goal of mine. So the fellowship was the perfect um, opportunity for me to learn how do I even think about healthcare problems, not even just from a technology stand, standpoint, but also from like an empathy standpoint, like being a human and thinking really deeply about who are you impacting and who are the stakeholders of your, um, of your solution and your questions. So um, that has really opened up new ways for me to think about um, problems that exist around us and how do we design interdisciplinary solutions to tackle those. Um, so yeah, really grateful for the fellowship for that. And we also made really new friends um, through this, this program. So um, I hope you guys really uh, enjoy your time here also. And um, I will popcorn to uh, Alexa. Hi, my name is Alexa. I'm a third year. I'm hoping to major in interdisciplinary studies, um, kind of because I'm really passionate about public health. But I also know that like a huge thing we say in public health is, I mean, in the Fung Fellowship is like more than your major. And I really want to encompass those different interests that I have by being able to take classes at Berkeley that might be outside of the public health major. Um, I am also doing the health and innovation track. And something that I have really loved about the um, fellowship so far is that we do a lot of ideating and a lot of using our creativity. And I feel like in other spaces, I haven't really gotten as much exposure to that. So the fellowship has really allowed me to think outside the box and gain all these new skills that I feel like I 
was not having. And it's a lot of like hands-on work as well. We do all these prototyping that are super fun. And I really enjoy getting to do this like creative aspect um, during a class. Um, thanks. Oh, thanks so much, Alexa. I'll, I'll pass it on to you, Shabar. Hi, I'm Shavar Martin. I'm a third year and my hometown is Brooklyn, New York. One thing I like doing outside of school is, um, oh, I'm sorry, my major is African-American studies, sorry, interdisciplinary studies, which is African-American studies, pre-med, and a little bit of engineering on the side. I enjoy playing with my friend's dog at the dog park. Sometimes I go there by myself. I just like the dogs. Um, and also exploring the city of Oakland. Uh, my favorite place to visit so far is the Freedom Archive Museum, where it's a collection of um, and archives of like movements around the country, around the world. Um, one project that I did love with um, Funk Fellowship is the my team um, my team collaboration with Mental Health Solutions for non English native speakers. Um, it was the best type of experience because what it did it opened my eyes to like biomedical and bioengineering fields. And it was like a creative side of me that was wanting to be open and the Funk Fellowship really opened it. It pushed me to think creatively. Um, it pushed me to become a, more of an entrepreneur. And now I'm using more um, of interdisciplinary skills that I've learned and gained throughout the fellowship in my everyday life and my future career. Thanks, Shavar. And last but not least, Emma, if you wouldn't mind doing a quick intro, and I know I want to save some time at the end to hear, um, at the end of this session, to hear more about your, your projects as well. So, Emma. Hi, yeah. So, my name's Emma. Um, I'm a fourth year. I'm studying bioengineering and electrical engineering and computer science, and my hometown is actually Tampa, Florida. I found out about this fellowship when I was applying to Berkeley and I was kind of trying to figure out whether or not the school was a good fit for me. And I, after applying, have found that like the reasons that I was initially drawn to this program are very, very true in practice in that a lot of the stuff you do here is very technical, especially if you're in some kind of engineering field. And Berkeley approaches a lot of things from a very theoretical standpoint, which from an understanding sense is very helpful but you also don't get that sense of like real world connection and sense of meaning and purpose in your work that I think I was lacking for a while. And this fellowship helps you reconnect those aspects of like what you're studying with what you're doing in practice and how you can like apply it to different problems. So for instance, my project was designing a neural integrated hand exoskeleton for a local partner in Berkeley who had um, spinal cord damage. And that was just like super enlightening and also kind of helped me realize that part of the reason I was feeling really lost in my coursework for the past like semester or so was just because I'd gotten too bogged down in like a very theoretical lens. And I, the thing that had originally drawn me to engineering was the possibility of like designing new technology to help people. And I think this fellowship does a great job of reconnecting you with that purpose. Yeah. Thanks so much, Emma, and thanks all for introducing yourselves. We'll have more time at the end to hear um, from each of them and ask questions. Um, but for now, I'm gonna start to share my screen once again and take us through um, the remainder of the agenda. Can you all see my screen? Will you give me a head, thumbs up if you can? Okay, see the slides? Okay, great, thanks all. <laughs> Okay, so with that, I'm excited to lead us into um, talking about our program and breaking down a bit what is the Fung Fellowship, what are the key components, and what you can anticipate. So first, before we, before we dig in, I always like to provide a little bit of historical context of where the fellowship began. Um, we really our, the fellowship was born in 2016 as the brainchild of Coleman Fung, uh, pictured here, um, a Cal alum, uh, army veteran, entrepreneur, and much, much more. Um, he really had a vision of creating an undergraduate opportunity to foster design thinkers, to solve real world problems um, that would really incorporate innovation and interdisciplinary studies and minds. So in 2016, um, a partnership between the College of Engineering and the School of Public Health was born. 
um, to really pilot a new program that was really designed for agility and poised for reiteration. So initially we began as a two-year program model and based on student feedback, um, we evolved into the model we have today, which I'll talk more about shortly. Um, so therefore in 2018, we began our new model, a one plus one model as we like to call it, um, with our first year program as well as our honors program to better support the student experience. Um, and then again, we kind of redesigned as Dan was alluding to earlier of the interest based on student interest as well as a gap and need um, was a partnership was born with the College of Natural Resources to launch the conservation and tech track um, in 2020, um, really rounding out our two, our two tracks in both health and conservation. Um, and our most recent update I like to share is um, we have really moved from changing from health and tech to health and innovation, as well as conservation plus tech to conservation plus innovation. And really, we did that because our core mission here at the fellowship really is impact. And we know that technology is not always the key ingredient for every population and for every challenge that we face. Therefore, we want to recognize that innovation is really at the heart of that impact that incorporates technology, creativity, customer needs and insights, institutional knowledge, so much more. And so we're really excited that this next cohort will be the first really a part of the health plus innovation track and conservation plus innovation track. So here's a closer look at our program model. So as I mentioned, all fellows who are admitted into the fellowship commit to one year um, with an opportunity to extend into a second year into the honors program. So during the first year, um, which I'll break down a little more further, um, all fellows participate in fall and spring semester courses were three units um, that have a lecture and lab component. Um, each of those semesters include a design challenges with community and interested and industry partners. Um, and our design challenges are our projects, which again, we'll, we'll get into more detail. Um, we like to say our plus is that we like to say we support internships and professional development opportunities throughout the fellowship, but especially between the junior and senior year for those who are in our program as juniors. We also do a lot of support for those of our fellows who are seniors and are looking to um, prepare for life and opportunities beyond Cal. Um, while you know, internships are not a guarantee as part of our program, we do provide a number of resources and share our own collective networks as well as uh, partner organizations um, in order to make you all successful within, um, within what you're looking to really deepen your knowledge within that summer experience. And then all fellows who complete the first year of the program have the opportunity to apply to a second year honors experience. Um, this is really builds on the skills and foundation of the first year and dives even deeper into a year long partner project or fellow led project. So what do what does the fellowship even cover? I like to say um, all fellows have the opportunity to really explore a diverse range of areas and topics, and it does vary cohort to cohort, um, dependent on student interest, but also on the projects that we work on each semester. However, here are some of the, the core areas that we have we have covered in the past. Um, and we'll continue to touch on as, as we go through the fellowship experience and curriculum. So we like to say our topics range in leadership, really innovation and design, um, really look at interdisciplinary teaming, the things to be successful, really um, kind of stepping back, looking at implicit bias. We do 360 feedback evaluations for all of our teams. What does it mean to have an inclusive interdisciplinary team? How do project manage that team? Um, and within our innovation space, as I mentioned, innovation can look like a lot of different things depending on the need and the opportunity. Um, some of the areas where we've explored this in the past has been potentially with wearables, 
um, blockchain, 3D printing, app development, web, web development. Um, we've used Figma in the past um, and provide opportunity for students really to explore their own interests and where they intersect with impact. Um, and then design is really a core piece of the fellowship. Um, we use a human-centered design model, um, which really also leads to our other core elements of storytelling, looking at journey mapping, prototyping, and much more. So we like to say that as fellows progress throughout the fellowship, their knowledge deepens as well as their skill and experience also expands within a sequential learning model. Um, all fellow, fellows who are admitted into the program are required to attend boot camp, um, which is essentially a one weekend prior to the semester starting, which really gets fellows feet wet um, in some of the key fundamentals of the fellowship, including human-centered design, storytelling, some professional development, and really thinking about ethics and innovation and technology. As we progress into the fall semester, you'll see each of these elements really builds upon the other, much of it revisiting and deepening, as well as allowing for um, for the content of the course, either within health or conservation, to really um, be able to flourish within each. So um, in the fall semester, really going more in depth into the human-centered design process, um, really looking at primary, secondary research, the innovation space and capacity within each of these tracks, teaming, project planning, um, working with that first partner organization, and then really honing the skills of pitching and project storytelling, which will grow within, um, within each project in each semester. Um, so as you can see, the spring semester builds upon the skills that were already um, honed and introduced within the fall semester and really goes farther in depth, um, working closer with industry community partners, um, being able to do landscape analysis, asset mapping, um, refining of the user research and interview process, and getting towards that product or service development, advanced project management, lo-fi to hi-fi prototyping, as well as the opportunity to really table a prototype and refine your, your elevator pitch to the broader community and to, to your customer group. So again, each of the skills that are, are introduced are then continued to be honed in throughout the year, the year long experience. So as I mentioned, we have two tracks, um, one within health and one within conservation. Um, as the areas that I mentioned earlier that the fellowship covers are covered in each of these around leadership, around innovation and around design. Um, but within each of those, they're focused in two, two distinct areas. So for the health track, we really look at public health and well-being very broadly. So topics can include social isolation, nutrition, housing, mental health, um, much more. Um, these types of challenges um, are not are not simple. Um, they, they take really looking at a number of different factors in order to really be able to innovate impactfully within them. Um, so that really includes assessing policy, social, economic, and environmental factors, um, and some more detail of some different challenges um, that we look at within this space are population health, we look at health equity, social determinants, so social justice, and, um, and really health disparities. Um, so in our, in our conservation track, we're really more focused in biodiversity conservation as well as environmental health. So topics have included land use practices, alternative livelihoods, public education, and more. Similarly, we're, um, these are all issues that are also very interdisciplinary. And so take assessing these, um, assessing these challenges and a number of different factors, including policy, social, economic, and environmental factors. And um, we do this by also exploring some of the primary, primary threats um, to conservation environmental, environmental health, such as land and sea use, exploitation of species, climate change, pollution, and, and non-native species. So, Within the first year of the program, um, here is a little bit of a closer look of some of the components that are included. 
So on the left hand, we like to say we have our foundational pieces that all fellows participate in, which is lecture and lab each semester. All, so these are where three units um, and happen on the north side of campus. Um, students participate in boot camp, as I mentioned, to really set that foundational learning as well as start to build the community of the fellowship. Um, students participate in retreats um, where they get to do workshops, again, continue to build their network and really focus on professional development as they go into their spring semester and really get the opportunity to work on both short and long-term projects. Um, these are framed as design challenges, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, but in addition to these foundational components, there's a number of opportunities for fellows to really be able to deepen and carve their own fellowship experience. We really like to say the fellowship is really what you make it. Um, and so we offer a number of opportunities that fellows also elect into participating in. So things such as conferences and company site visits, networking events, uh, different workshops, um, hackathons and career services. So no matter what background um, you may have coming into the fellowship or which track you participate in, all fellows upon completion of the Fung Fellowship will be able to do the following. Um, I'll read through these just really quickly. So one is engage in customer research that is empathetic and authentic, implementing diverse and robust sampling and allowing for feedback to influence project decision-making Demonstrate a deeper understanding of the potential that technology has to influence disciplines in substantive ways. Identify the challenges and opportunities associated with diversity, bias, and conflict within teams. Implement work norms to support innovation within project teams and with project partners. And use storytelling to communicate effectively with diverse audiences and for diverse purposes. So again, this is um, no matter what skill sets you come in with, this, these, are, these are the learning objectives that we have across, across all fellows. So here are our current fellow cohorts, our 2022-2023 class. Um, just wanted to share a bit about these folks. Um, representative of 36 unique majors, 26 students are double majors, 28% um, are transfer students, 39% um, um, identify as a person of color, and 26% identify as first gen. Um, of course, we know um, this group of this group of students um, are much more than the numbers that I just read off. There's a number of experiences, different perspectives, different backgrounds that they bring into the space um, of the fellowship. And really, I'd say that's where the true um, the true magic of the fellowship lies is within um, within within these fellows who come together based on their desire to make an impact and explore the space together. So a little bit more showing you what the fellowship may look like inside the classroom. Starting at the upper left, you'll see fellows um, working with sticky notes, whiteboards, really engaged in the design process, which is a lot of just unlocking thinking and ideas within each of us. Um, in the upper right is our, our fun fellowship classroom where our lab section takes place. And going down, you can see some of the events that we hold throughout the year as part of the end of semester showcasing and getting to share out your innovations. Um, we have a number of guest speakers who come in each semester to really enrich your all's experience and learning about this field. That's actually what is happening out in the sec in different sectors, what are real organizations um, challenged with, where are the opportunities and getting that opportunity to network. And then really providing the opportunity for cross-learning. Um, there's a lot of opportunity with such interdisciplinary students to learn from your peers uh, who may have a totally different academic experience than you've had at Cal, um, but that can really be able to um, enrich your own learning within the project space. 
And here we have a number of photos of what happens outside of the classroom walls, um, ranging from retreats to some of our community building, um, off sites at retreats, or at, at site visits, excuse me, conferences, hackathons, um, and networking. So with that, I'm gonna quickly go through a few um, projects um, to give you an idea of some of the spaces that fellows have worked in, as well as our framework for design challenges. Um, and then we'll get to very briefly talking about the application and then really wanna leave the most of the remaining time to talk about with our panel in a Q&A. So first to set the scene, our projects, which we call and frame as design challenges, are really one of the fundamental pieces of the fellowship experience. This is that real world experience that we keep talking about um, and the opportunity to really work with industry and community partners on a challenge that they really have within their organization. Um, we frame these projects and this challenge spaces with a how might we, um, which you might have heard of before. This is the framework for which we begin our human-centered design process. Um, those projects have mentors and leads who are either campus staff, they might be an industry partner, or community partner, to provide that feedback and guidance along the way. Um, our teams can be made up of anywhere from four to eight fellows, but they're really intentionally made of interdisciplinary students, so folks with a number of different majors and academic backgrounds on the same team in order to tackle these, these challenges. Um, the solutions that students come up with are really a, um, a result of research, ideation, and testing within the innovation space. And timeline of these projects can range from something as one lecture can be a design sprint to a semester long, which happens in the spring semester. So just to share a few examples, first from the health track and then I'll share within the conservation. Um, one of our partners um, last year was UCSF Innovation Ventures. Um, they're really focused on reducing anxiety, depression, suicide, substance abuse, and school absences among teenagers. Their innovation space was sleep. Um, so they worked on a sleep-based application um, and intervention for adolescents um, that could quantifiably improve mental and physical health outcomes. This is something that is now out there and being used and tested among UCSF physicians um, and collecting data to back this, um, this um, innovation. This group interviewed something like 60 um, teenagers in order for this project um, and really came um, up to win a few different grant proposals um, that goes on today. Um, so with that, I'll share our next project that we have worked on in the past. This is a more broad, this is a quicker project, but something really looking at the landscape. So this was a partnership with Kaiser and PIH Health looking at telehealth to improve equity and access for patients and physicians. So as part of this project, um, they came to their solution, which was really the synthesis of their research for mostly non-English speaking and elderly folks, um, and really focused on community outreach, looking at the local orgs within the open area that already provided free technology um, support services, and really created a a framework um, that they gave back to um, um, these organizations looking at uh, training for physicians on, on a number of the opportunity areas that they found within this challenge. And last within the health track that I'll share, and then I'll also let the other, the fellows from the health um, the health and innovation track share more afterwards. Um, however, this was a partnership with um, actually Berkeley Public Health. They work with a number of organizations um, and we frequently partner with them. It was really focused on elderly individuals to access connected, comprehensive medical and social services in their own community. As you can say, they really developed the, they went through the app route. You can see their journey map here on the right of the patients they were looking to provide, what the need space was, what their timeline looked like. And they went through and their prototyping really looked like sketching out what is what, what would be needed in the app, what are the key pieces that are missing and would be impactful for this solution and how to get it to that next stage um, 
through um, lo-fi prototyping. All right, so first within the conservation and tech track. So we've worked again with each, with each track and number of different partners. Um, this one was with Civic Design Studio located um, locally here in Oakland. They really wanted to focus on creating an outdoor structure that promoted health and wellness, biodiversity and celebration of East Oakland history. As you can see as a part of this project, their innovation really created this um, beautiful visual model that you could actually walk through <laughs> um, visually, which was amazing. Um, after many interviews and um, going to the space to really um, measure out what was feasible within the space, they really focused on empowering physical and mental health via people powered electricity generating gym. Um, they um, focused on making connections to the overlapping migration stories of both the people and the animals of Oakland, so really focused on empowerment um, and really looking at highlighting local activists of color from East Oakland um, by showcasing their art throughout this space. So now Civic Design Studio is working with, with this and with the city of Oakland to really to bring this into fruition. Um, Next, we have a project with um, EFC West, um, as well as the Hoopa Valley Tribe. Um, they really focused on looking at patterns of platforms for communication, um, for working with tribal members um, around environmental hazards and mitigation strategies. So they went through, they went up to the Hoopa Valley um, Tribe to visit with um, with tribal members, as well as really see the land and space several times throughout their experience within the fellowship. And they really came, their innovation space ended up being developing a podcast that focused on three different elements of the environmental world, interviewed and really gave the chance and the mic of the voices of tribal members to talk about their history and their connection to, um, to the natural space of Hoopa Valley, as well as be able to uh, continue a legacy of storytelling. So this is something that's actually still going on, which is also really exciting. I'll also find the link to these uh, podcasts and share out. Um, and these members, um, again, came together and began working in the first year track and continued this project actually into their honors year. And last but not least, I just wanted to share, this was a really awesome project. Again, this is more of a physical prototype built, but they were really focused on co-creating a sustainable beekeeping practice um, to decrease uh, poaching in Gwindi National Park and providing alternative income. So they really got their hands dirty and created a smoker that um, for bees that cost um, less than $5. So they created this prototype, they tested it, um, and really looked within the organization and within um, the community interviews they were able, um, they were able to gather through uh, Wild Conservation Network, Wildlife Conservation Network, um, to really develop a um, low cost, low tech solution um, for those communities. Oh, now I'm jumping around. Okay, so now um, before we go into q and I just wanna mention um, again that the application um, is open. It is also due February 17th um, by midnight. Um, it really is an application that's really more focused on your interests, what brought you to this space, why are you passionate about the Fung Fellowship, about being a part of this program. It should really only take one to two hours in order to complete. Um, both rising juniors and rising seniors are eligible to apply. Um, truly any major is eligible to participate in the fellowship and we do not have a GPA requirement. Um, down below, you can see our timeline for application deadline to interview period to offer um, coming out in April. Um, we'll also share these links out. Um, the coffee chat, which you mentioned happening um, February 7th, is also a great opportunity to ask questions about the application as they come. We can also answer them here. Um, and with that, I really want to stop sharing my screen. 
and open it up to um, any questions that you all might have. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat um, or raise your hand and I can also, you can also unmute. Um, and if not, I can start with reading the first question. Yes, Catherine. Um, hi, Adrian. I'm Catherine and I go by she, her. I'm wondering about if I choose one of the concentration, will I be losing the opportunity to attend the other concentration classes? Because uh, for me personally, I'm still kind of like exploring between well-being and environmental health. So like, for example, what I'm studying is cognitive science and conservation of resource. So it kind of confused me when I have to choose one of the concentration and I'm worried about if I will if I choose one of them, will I be losing the, my opportunity to, uh, you know, losing the other side of my interest? And if I have to choose one of them, which one will you recommend me to choose? Thank you. Yeah, maybe I'll start it off and then I'll also maybe allow one of the fellows to chat about their, their experience. So um, I totally understand the interest and in having multiple interests and being torn between which track to apply into. Um, when you go into the application, you can actually um, rank your which track you're interested in. You can also put no preference if you're really genuinely open to both. I'll say, thankfully, both of these tracks are very interdisciplinary and there is opportunity for overlap. Um, this semester, we're actually opening up for each track when so there's guest speakers or guest wor workshops for the other track to be able to join. So we're really working on opportunity. So even if you're in one track, you can also be able to glean and participate in some of those opportunities and learnings across the other track. Um, I'll say you can't go wrong, um, but I think it's really up to you of, of where the space is that you wanna learn and deepen. Um, you know, you can only get credit for one of the tracks. Um, you can't participate um, in both fully. However, um, there are a lot of opportunities in order that we are continuously trying to create where there's mix between both tracks. So you can glean a little bit from both. Yeah, thank you. Great. And with that, maybe one, one thing that I'll ask um, and any of the panelists feel free to share of just curious of how the fellowship has been unique compared to some of your other um, courses or, or other opportunities that you've had at Cal. I can start off. Um, again, I'm Shavar Martin. I go by he, him pronouns. So this opportunity has been very eye-opening, as I said before. It made me realize my potential in biomedical and bioengineering fields. And it also made me realize that human-centered design is, it may seem the hardest task, but when you work and collaborate with, you, with your team member, it you find in the simplest solutions to that. And this opportunity gave me that idea to express that creative side by collaborating, um, team building, making journey maps, and um, engaging with critical conversations with the GSI and um, guest speakers. And this opportunity has really shown me that you can gain so much out of it, regardless of your major or your interests. This is something that could push you further in life. And I re I'm really glad for that opportunity. Thanks, Shabar. Anyone else wanna add? Alexa. Uh, yeah, I can also answer. My name's Alexa, I use the she series pronouns. Um, I think for me, I've learned that through this internship, um, especially like from the speakers, like your path does not have to be particularly like linear. And something that I've really liked is how many of the speakers also have this experience where like they graduated, like, let's say with like a computer science um, major, but then they ended up in a field um, that was like working in health, maybe not necessarily doing a lot of computer science. And it just shows how like your experiences and like the actual things that you do and like how you involve um, yourself and spend your time are really going to like define your path and not necessarily just the like name of the degree that you get. 
Um, so I think that's really cool, like um, how the previous question um, from the student was, do you have to be in either track? Like, it depends what what you want to do and like whatever you're passionate about. Um, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of hand hands on experience um, regardless. Awesome. Thanks. Lexi. Yes, Emma. Uh, yeah, just following off of that. Um... I think something that like sets this fellowship apart is the emphasis on the cohort being so involved in what you actually do. Like there is your opinions and your desires and what you want to learn and what you want to see are like very strongly taken into account. And it really doesn't feel like you're necessarily just being led and following in the direction of what a figure of authority is telling you, but more so collaborating with them and both learning from people who are experts in their own field, but also providing your input on what would be helpful for you and what you'd like to see more of. Or if you're struggling with something or need advice in some area of maybe your project or just your career in general, you have a lot of ab ability to actually like communicate with the Fung staff and the rest of your cohort in trying to create some kind of path that allows people who may be helpful to come and speak or just to put you in contact with people who may help you learn those things. Thanks, Emma. Um, yeah, just one last thing, um, uh, just following up on what Emma said, another thing that um, really uh, makes the fellowship a very distinct experience is, um, uh, like Emma said, the legacy it gives you. So there's an entire cohort of guest speakers and mentors and your own peers and uh, people with a lot of experience um, with uh, basically um, not just like how your classes give you technical and theoretical experience, the fellowship really gives you the opportunity to use those skills, but also think about what kind of problems that could arise in the future we can solve with these skills which are at our hand and also create new skills for you, um, make you think in directions you may not have um, really thought about before, um, develop a lot of soft skills also that are really needed um, in the entrepreneurship and innovation spaces, uh, especially in the 21st century with the uh, rise of technology. So really learning how to adapt to the fast-paced um, growth of technology and um, ideas and just the world around you. Um, that really, it gives you a very real world environment um, to grow and learn in, so yeah. Yeah, um, if I could add one more thing to that is that um, this is like the one space where I really get to meet other people from like so many different majors. So like, let's say I meet somebody that's like doing architecture or like design or something, I can be like, wow, I have never met somebody like this. What brought you, you know, down this path to want to major in this? And I can also learn about like their other extracurricular experiences. And it's just a way to really like grow like yourself as on your own um in your career so that's something I would never get like just in a public health course thanks so much all and in the last minute too I want to see Dan do you have anything else you want to add or share in particular around the conservation track as well well I think uh one thing people here might have noticed is that our conservation projects our design challenges often are very much interlinked just like we are with uh, the environment and our own health, right? So public health and environmental health are just constantly interlinked and, and rely on each other. And so we try to uh, bring that about in our design challenges and show those connections and such. So you get a little of both in the conservation track for sure. And uh, really proud of uh, being able to not only highlight that and offer it, but the various organizations um, that bring those opportunities to our students. And so they're very exciting. Um, and we're just kicking off this week our, our uh, design challenges, the more in-depth ones for the spring. And I um, just can't wait to see what comes up out of these. So yeah, it, it's I think it's, a, it's one of the best opportunities to um, get sort of an internship and a grade for it at the same time and, and really get hands on. So don't miss out on that opportunity, I'd say. 
<laughs> well, thanks all. It's hard to believe it's already 6.01. So I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but really thank you so much for being here. We are going to caption this recording, which I'll stop in a moment, <laughs> and then we'll share it out with all those who RSVP and feel free to please reach out. Thanks, Priyanka, for putting the links in the chat. Um, I'm going to stop recording.